Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to the group exhibit of Hanover Messe 2014, Hydrogen Fuel Cells and Batteries. Uh, for those in the aisles, come and sit down and have a tea or coffee on us. This is our last uh, presentation of the day. Uh, so I encourage you to come sit down. I will be speaking with Hydrogenics Gameveha regarding uh, compact, rugged, robust, latest news on Hydrogenics fuel cell products. Please welcome Business Development Manager Mark Kramer to the stage. Hello, thank you for joining Hi. me. My pleasure. Thank you. So, perhaps you could provide a little bit of background uh, on Hydrogenics. Um, I'm aware of the, the company being a Canadian. You have a, a base in Canada. Uh, can you please provide d detail into what types of fuel cells uh, you guys offer? Yeah, we, uh, we offer uh, predominantly PEM fuel cells in both stationary and mobility applications stationary for both backup and continuous prime power and uh, mobility in uh, yeah pretty much any type of vehicle whether it's in the air on the water on the road uh, working in inside halls or airports you name it uh, we've got fuel cells in these applications what are the benefits of the high PEM fuel cells um, in terms of the application specifically uh, for mobility uh, the benefits from mobility is uh, that uh, combined in a, in a hybrid system uh, that uh, the vehicle can get a longer range and uh, overall lighter weight and higher performance than you can with a, a battery alone. And of course, uh, in, co uh, in contrast to a, uh, a combustion engine, it's a totally uh, clean and green solution. Uh, either with uh, either local zero emissions or absolutely zero emissions depending on the source of the hydrogen. And in terms of uh, telecom and, and backup, can you go into some of the um, initiatives you have right now in term with your high pump fuel cells, um, projects you're involved in um, internationally? Yeah, okay, telecom is certainly an early adopter for the technology and uh, we have a partnership with the U.S. Uh, but a global company called ComScope uh, who made a pretty significant investment into the company and currently owns about 30% uh, of the, our, uh, our shares. And uh, they are a uh, uh, supplier of uh, fiber optic cable, uh, communications uh, towers right to the, the last mile of, of uh, <coughs> cellular networks in uh, base stations and also provide uh, power solutions. So with our fuel cells and uh, electronics and control systems, they integrate that into a package uh, which <coughs> provides the um, basically the running characteristics of batteries and diesel generators, uh, the positive attributes, uh, which gives the, uh, their customers the advantage of uh, having longer runtime uh, than, uh, than batteries but uh, the refueling and operation uh, is running like, uh, like a diesel, but without the, uh, the, the emissions. So quite beneficial in terms <clears throat> of also remote communities and industrial applications. Are you doing anything with, with mine sites internationally at all? I'm sorry, what mine, we're doing? Mine sites? Mine sites. Uh, well, that's uh, something we, uh, we announced in the last uh, couple of months. A uh, very remote location in uh, the north of Canada on the tip of Quebec in the Arctic. Uh, we delivered a, uh, a remote, independent, uh, or off-grid uh, system, or we are delivering, I should say, uh, so it's being uh, produced right now, um, for a mining community that uh, normally gets all their energy shipped by, uh, uh, by ship uh, in the form of diesel, but with uh, new wind tur turbine capability that can withstand uh, Arctic conditions, uh, the, uh, the community can reduce uh, and eventually eliminate uh, their use of diesel by running just simply wind and uh, hydrogen fuel cells. So you're involved in a lot of different uh, market applications. What would you say is Hydrogenics' uh, main strength? Like, what, what, what is your, your, your biggest innovation? Uh, well, yeah, that's a... Uh, I think our main strength, strength is our, uh, our development uh, and engineering which has uh, achieved some very key patents, which uh, gives us a, a longer lifetime and a high reliability of the fuel cells. Uh, also that, that, uh, that design expertise and engineering uh, expertise has given us very compact, uh, lightweight systems, very robust, 
Uh, so I think we're definitely uh, among PEM fuel cells. Uh, it's definitely world class and, uh, and in many respects leading. What, what separates these from, from other fuel cells available in the market? Because there's a lot of different fuel cells here today. Uh, what separates yeah, the yeah. high PEM from, from all the others? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, a, a few things, but the, the biggest uh, difference uh, for us is we decided to go low pressure. And, uh, and it's uh, low, low temperature as well, but that plays in hand with the, uh, the low pressure. So that means that the stack is a little bit larger because of the lower pressure. But because of the low pressure, we can uh, save a lot on, on, on space and uh, the need for a more complex balance of plants. We have a very simple balance of plant with no humidification required, uh, with this, not a, a compressor, but a low uh, pressure blower, which is much simpler and much more compact. So in, at the end, we have a much smaller system than our competitors who have a high pressure system. And what are the scalability of these? Like, can you customize them for, for your clients? And how do you integrate these for them? Yeah, well, we have a family of modules which uh, start as low as uh, two and a half kilowatt and go up to 30 kilowatt in our largest uh, single stack. Uh, um, and then what we do after 30 kilowatts is we build up a number of, of the 30 kilowatts together. So in a single 19-inch rack, you can have uh, 200, uh, sorry, 120 uh, kilowatts. And with uh, 10 of those racks, you've got 1.2 megawatt. And those 10 racks would be able to fit in an area of space smaller than this stage. So for, this, for the power density, it's quite, quite dense. And this is quite a new, new development in, in terms of the technology for hydrogenics. Uh, correct, although the, the 30 kilowatt module was released first in 2011. Uh, but this new rack uh, is coming out in this, uh, the next couple of months, being delivered to uh, two European projects uh, in the uh, fuel cells and hydrogen joint undertaking, the uh, Don Quixote project, which is in Belgium, also with, a, with an electrolyzer, and the other is the Ingrid project, so in to grid, so it's a feed into grid uh, project uh, with NL in Italy, in uh, Puglia. Yeah. Can you go into uh, in more, in more detail in terms of the, the I know you covered the uh, joint undertaking one a little bit. In terms of the other project, um, and, and the larger scale, you said 120, 100, 120 megawatts. Can you go into who, who you're working with in terms of that? Uh, the 120 kilowatt, you mean? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, well, in the Don Quixote project, uh, uh, we're partnered with uh, the Belgian uh, grocery chain and uh, retailer uh, Colroyd. Uh, in the Puglia project, it's NL, the uh, Italian electrical utility, and uh, McPhee is involved in that for uh, the uh, metal hydride storage, uh, solid state storage. Uh, and uh, yeah, those are the main partners there. Uh, in the one in uh, northern on or uh, northern Quebec, uh, we're working with. Uh, there's a, a mining company called Extrata. Uh, nickel. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah. Are you guys doing anything in terms of the aviation aviation industry? Yes, we are. Uh, we have a number of different projects that we've done with uh, German Aerospace DLR. Uh, Standard fuel cells, actually our backup versions were used uh, and, and, and tested a lot for uh, uh, alternative for the emergency power, the ram air turbine uh, in uh, electrified uh, landing gear drives so that the aircraft can drive around. So an a Airbus A320 has demonstrated this. Uh, without running the, uh, the kerosene uh, jet engines, the plane can move around on the tarmac. So it saves a lot of energy and is uh, clean and the other uh, application is uh, producing water in the air uh, by not lifting having to lift water in the air for uh, for the uh, for hand washing and the toilet flushing simply lift hydrogen which is the lightest element there is of course and getting oxygen up in the air and making water in the air with byproduct uh, high, uh, sorry electricity uh, and the other byproduct is uh, the exhaust is uh, oxygen depleted, so it's used for uh, fire protection in the uh, in the uh, kerosene tanks. 
areas. He, and you said it was an, it, there was this demonstration project. Is there anything, is it actually commercial? Is it currently being used in any of the aircrafts right now? Uh, in the aircrafts, no. Uh, it's still, there's a, uh, a number of year development project. And as you know, something that goes into the air that has passengers on it needs a lot of testing. Yes. <laughs> uh, so it's a, it's a longer program. Uh, what we have also done in the uh, air, aircraft related uh, market is uh, delivered customized fuel cells to, uh, to also to German Aerospace uh, who installed those into uh, a single manned light aircraft and, which uh, flew not last year, previous year uh, on, a, on our uh, program all across Germany. And uh, the next stage is the planning is to, uh, to go across Atlantic. Oh. Um, so you're involved, in, like I said, in a lot of different applications. Is there anything new that, you, that, you, that we can expect from you and any big uh, terms of growth and additional commercialization that we can anticipate in the next coming years? Uh, well, from us, we're starting to get more into an, and more proactive uh, focus on fuel cell buses. And uh, in our uh, product development and releases in 2011 and 2012, uh, those are now being tested by uh, several different uh, bus manufacturers and uh, we're looking for a large growth in, uh, in that market because the fuel cell bus for the uh, um, commercialization is uh, we think a nearer term than uh, the uh, personal auto automobile and it's not because it's an easier application it's tougher because the buses are running uh, 12 hours, 16 hours, some cases 24 hours a day and 365 days a, a year. But from the point of view of, uh, of fueling, it's a much easier application because you have a centralized fueling station and not have to have fueling stations everywhere like you would with uh, personal cars. Uh, the integration and the, the, the space and uh, also the relative cost of the fuel cell to the vehicle is much easier to make more commercially attractive than in the, uh, the personal car. Uh, I'm going to open this up to the floor. Does anyone in the audience have any questions for Mark regarding hydrogenics and the fuel cells? No? Uh, okay, well, we are getting close to our time here, so I'm going to thank Mark for coming up on stage and talking to me. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank you. If you have any questions, Hydrogenics Booth is right behind you, uh, C59, uh, with a nice little car there. Uh, please go visit him, ask him any questions you want. I'm sure he'd get into more detail with you in, in person. Thank you.